Um, so maybe, um, Paula, um, yeah, can you please uh, introduce yourself uh, and what you do at Record Benkiza? Thank you, Liash. Um, well, I am Paola Relal. Uh, I am currently the Global Category Director for Vanish. And you, you might think of my job as, you know, I have been given this book to write chapters about where is the direction we want to take of the brand. So different chapters could be around how we drive innovation, how we're going to uh, bring new consumers uh, by finding um, partnerships and solutions, and how are we, we're going to, for example, like take the brand to be more sustainable, how we're going to take the brand to the next level. So it's basically about driving the di strategic direction of the brand so we can be present in more households um, to take our superior solutions there. Uh, that's a little bit what I currently do, and I've been working in Rekit for the past 19 years. So you could maybe ask also, you know, what Rekit is, because many of the people is, is one of the first questions, um, you know, they, they ask. Uh, but it's also not very familiar as a company, but we basically carry household names, brands like Dettol, like Finish, like Airwix, like Vanish, like Stripe Seals. So it's basically one of these companies that has both households and healthcare products that are sitting today in consumers' houses and, and are part of everyday lives in the kitchens, in the bathrooms, in the laundry room. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Okay, great. Kyle, off to you. Of course, tough act to follow, but thank you very much for the opportunity. So my name's Kyle. I'm the CEO and founder of Voxwash, which, put very simply, is a platform aiming to show the world that we can clean clothes and textiles of many different types in a way that doesn't pollute our environment, the planet and its people. I set up the business now three and a half years ago while studying a PhD at Oxford University. And put quite simply, we are building a life support system for clothes. And we really, really enjoy working with some of the leaders in R&D and with decades of experience in fabric care and of course, consumer habits. So that's why we decided to work with our best friends, Paolo and Vanish, of course. Okay, hey, great, great. And uh, how did that relationship come about in the first place? Mm. So we did a program as a business called Founders Factory, which is an accelerator for young businesses in London. And it has a unique format where each vertical or kind of group cohort of companies has a corporate partner. In our case, we were part of the hygiene vertical and wreck was the corporate partner for our group. And we met the team, the senior leadership team, um, the kind of prior um, head of, of Vanish, um, the kind of global category director there as well, and formed a relationship not only around kind of learning from Reckitt's governance and, and you know, Vanish and its work with consumer trends, behavior, and also trying to power the circular fashion economy, but more and more we realized the R&D team around how the formulations Vanish are created, tested, scaled, and of course, with a singular focus on sustainability, just resonated massively with our mission. And so it was kind of obvious to, to join forces to drive that forwards together. Yeah, that's great. I think uh, yeah, definitely having that alignment, I'm sure, uh, helps from a relationship point of view going going forward. Any decisions uh, to make? Maybe, Paolo, maybe you can comment uh, on that point. Absolutely. So as Kyle was saying, one of Rekit's arms, it's called Access Venture Capital, where we actually invest in founders who fight for access on hygiene, nutrition, and health. And as a company, we are we are started to champion sustainability issues and align our brands to a sustainable development goal where we as a brand can use our products and superior solutions to meaningfully connect these so we can have, let's say, an active role. So what we have identified, as Kyle was saying, is that we are present in more than 75 households around the world. And we have a great opportunity to really influence uh, more sustainable consumer behaviors. And this is where, uh, when we realize, you know, how Oxwash was thinking about reinventing laundry for good, and we having a superior solution that could help to extend the life of garments, which is basically the purpose we have aligned. 
we want to help clubs live longer lives. It seemed like a very natural space to share the mission and the passion on how we avoid clothes going into landfill. And of course, vanish are fundamental for that because we play a role in terms of restoring garments, removing stains, and we also have now solutions that are bubble removers, for example, so you can bring back your clothes to one life in one wash. So then, um, since there was a natural fit in the sustainable clothing cycle, what we realized is how we could work together to then, uh, in the case of Banish and Rekit, have access to these very conscious sustainable consumers that are looking uh, to get a, a more sustainable laundry at home. Uh, and that's where we, we said it makes a lot of sense and how we can use the RB Ventures investment to actually get um, a mutual collaboration between the two brands. Uh, to start exploring and getting more insights and knowledge and capabilities on this space. Okay, great. Paula, I'm just going to uh, stick with you uh, for, for a bit. So you mentioned that you've been at Record for, for 19 years uh, and going through your profile, you seem to have covered the globe um, from... Um, um, uh, ...in England. Um, how has your experience up until now uh, helped in this partnership with, with Oxwash and the development process, I guess, of how it all um, works together? Well, um, yes, it's been 19 years uh, and it feels like, you know, um, a very long time. But in reality, um, what I would say is that it is a privilege to be able to work across different geographies, countries, to really get a grasp of our business. So I guess um, I could say that this time has given me the opportunity to really understand our consumers in different aspects and to be certain that without having that consumer guidance, our brands will not have, let's say, a long term. Um, so yes, we've used these and I've used these to improve our superior solutions, to make our products better, to continue to delight consumers. Uh, and I even had the privilege uh, to launch Vanish in, in a lot of Latin American markets because this brand has been on hand only for 20 years and it became the number one global stain removal brand um, across the world. But in 20 years, the world has changed. And I guess what I have seen across is that consumers are really expecting brands to take an ownership on how we create better impact for people, society. Um, there's a lot of sustainability issues now uh, being more clear even post pandemic and consumers have a lot of awareness around how they all can also contribute. And then um, I guess disruption, it's coming from every angle. So all of these, let's say, lessons that I grasped coming into uh, having the opportunity to lead a global brand have become a little bit the realization that how can we use some of these to really deliver our purpose and mission that I mentioned before. But then we realize we cannot do this alone. And this is where we're trying to really build an ecosystem of partners to work together to deliver this higher purpose and ambition. And then, as I mentioned before, as we share the same passion of, of, of Oxwash, then this became a natural space for us to then interact and, and, and get some of these learnings together towards working behind our mission and vision to help clubs live longer lives. Great, that's really interesting. <laughs> um, Kyle, I'm going to move on to you. Um, uh, having a look at your uh, LinkedIn profile um, was was really interesting. Um, and I'm going to point this out, so I'm going to read this one out so I, so I can get it right. Uh, so you were once upon a time a systems engineer for NASA, researching the use and effect of microorganisms for ex extended space travel. Uh, I just saw Matt Damon uh, pop into my head. <laughs> uh, and then a postgrad biophysicist project around grass, pollen, antigens, and human antibodies, at the same time founding a science and tech news platform called Spark News. Um, and it just goes, goes on and on. There's very interesting stuff. But I think my main uh, question here is, um, why laundry? Mm, completely by mistake is probably the best way to say this. I mean, my, my PhD was great, and kind of the trajectory I was taking pre-founding the business was very much in aerospace um, and, and to some degree synthetic biology, which all, all of the quotes that you've kind of mentioned circulate around. But I was pretty frustrated that a lot of the work that's done in deep academic tech, uh, especially in nascent technologies like synth in synthetic biology, take honestly forever to get to market and make a difference. And my view is that kind of barreling towards a climate collapse and we don't have the luxury of time. 
So I decided to take a lot of the thesis around synthetic biology engineering as a whole, circularizing systems, you know, life support and those systems are circularizing the use of air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the calories that we eat and all manner of other different things and apply it to an industry that was unsexy, you know, opaque, but ubiquitous and had an enormous impact. So I ended up looking around at the world kind of with open eyes, but realizing how much I hated doing washing and how frustrating it was spending hours of my day doing that when I wanted to be making a difference in the world and realizing, ah, this is it. This is that hidden industry that either lives under your sink in a cupboard somewhere or a laundrette or an industrial park in the in the, in God knows where. So I really kind of got a bug for, right, let's go and see how laundry is done at scale. Um, see if it needs, you know, innovating. And as soon as you lift the lid on the industry, that's very much what you see. You know, the inefficiencies of bleach used at scale, high temperatures, vast amounts of drinking water, energy, people not employed ethically, often paid below minimum wage or not at all, you know, in cash out the back of the pocket. It, it's just rife, ready for disruption and being dragged, kicking and screaming into the 21st century. So I've got a bug for it and I haven't looked back since. Okay. So so you sort of had an inkling once you lifted up the lid that this is potentially something, but how did you gain like customer validation in the early days of actually thinking about Oxwash as a business? Mm, early days, it was student facing primarily because I was still one year out from completing my PhD. So got a delivery backpack, spray painted it blue, wrote Oxwash around the side in Tipex and round and round. I went with a Google form collecting friends laundry and it was the validation of people stopping me in the street saying, hey, can you do my cafe's towels or my, you know, bars, aprons or my Airbnb linen that made me think, well, hang on a minute. There's an absolutely massive demand for this that no one's really meeting. And when you looked at the industry back then, it was very much a Uber for X style digital platform where existing dry cleaners, laundrettes and things like that were just put on a platform and then a flashy kind of whiz bang app connected to supply and demand. But no one was investing in the infrastructure, the technology, the innovation of the actual process itself, the logistics, the washing, the drying, the stain removal, things like that. So we focus on that, the engine room, rather than just digitizing an industry that exists as it has for decades, we want to change it so that we break that cycle for good. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So I really want to jump back into the partnership between Wreckers and Vanish and, and Oxwash. So Paula, um, you've, you've touched on it just now, but what is a record really aiming to get out of this partnership beyond just the product uh, side of things? So you know that you can use some of the technology, you're sharing tech, uh, technologies, but um, what are the extra things that uh, Record is aiming to get out um, of this partnership with Oxwash? So when we learned about the ambition of Kyle and the Oxwash team to reinvent laundry for good, this really seemed like the right place to go uh, for the brand. Because there's, there's two things. We recognize that there's this a consumer trend in, trend in terms of how the younger age generations are looking for products that are more friendly for the environment, who are looking for products that are offered and more sustainable. And we had recently delivered uh, and launched the Vanish 0% proposition, which is basically designed to address some of these concerns uh, because it, it continues to deliver, you know, the, the amazing stain removal performance, but doing this only with the ingredients that you need. So it has zero dyes, zero phosphate, zero optical brightener, zero fragrance. And what we said is, you know, if, if, if we can use this proposition and pair these uh, without a service, which is a new space for Reckit to learn, because we are more in the consumer house, but we are not in the B2C business or in the B2B business. So it felt like it could be a right way for us to start gathering learnings. So what we what we aligned with Kyle when we started the conversation is how we can make this a value collaboration. So I don't think we were looking at these are the record benefits, these are the Oxwatch benefits, but this is a value collaboration program and partnership where we could, in the case of, uh, of Oxwatch, you know, we, we know our consumer inside out. So we are connected to millions of these consumers and we have an amazing equity in the UK that we could then help Kyle to get a little bit more awareness on what is his mission, what is he's trying to do. 
but we also have a, a lot of R&D and science that could help to then get the, the chemistry that Kyle was using in a better way and more efficient way. So it's an opportunity for Oxwash to learn from companies like us on our processes and practices. But then in the case of us, it's how we learn from agile startups on their creativity, on how they're much leaner processes, and how then we could use uh, some of the inside access of having eco-conscious consumers coming and getting um, the laundry services because they're more sustainable to also inform uh, our sustainability strategy. One of the missions that we have on Vanish is how we are going to be a better product in the future. So we recognize we are not perfect. We recognize that there are areas we need to act upon. We need better packaging. We need better chemistry. We need to help consumers to have better laundry habits. habits. And this is where Oxwash is providing us with inside access. You know, They're helping us to bring new capabilities and knowledge in areas that are new for us, like data. Um, and they basically are helping us to use some of these insights to also inform how we can drive innovation future, uh, future in the future, but also how we can integrate services and solutions that are new spaces for us to play. Okay. And, and did you know that this was going to be part of the partnership when, when you got into it, that, that all these sharing opportunities were going to happen, or, or was it as as things started going on, you're like, oh, we can actually do that and we can gain more access there. And um, yeah. So, so, so I guess it's been a, a journey. So what we, what we have started to do, uh, and this is what you have seen in London, it's uh, we ran a pilot uh, because for us was, Kyle needed to understand what would the benefit that a brand like Vanish would bring to him. And we needed to understand as well how to get access to all of these uh, foresights and insights and more knowledge about the laundry practices. Uh, so basically what we did was a six month pilot uh, that was run against um, the, the, in the London Lagoon. Uh, Kyle probably could explain better. They have three different lagoons, one in Oxford, one in Cambridge, one in London. So what we said is, can we elaborate a pilot uh, to work across London? And then let's see what we are gonna get from this, right? Uh, Clearly, there has to be a co-branding, so we could help spill over our, you know, amazing equity on stain removal and, and cleaning the key efficacy in the laundry process to Kyle uh, and, and have a little bit of access uh, to, to these new consumers in a way that then we could use Kyle's platforms and data and insights and direct relationship to consumers to get some of the insights. And actually, it's been an amazing journey because we've, we've been able to really understand how consumers see the brand especially these new eco-conscious consumers. We have access to, to surveys and um, we can run uh, different, um, you know, emailings and, and get a lot of, uh, of understanding on where we are today, how we are being seen, but it's been a process. Now that we have finalized the pilot, I guess this is where we are now thinking, okay, how do we go on a national scale? How are we going to grow the partnership in a way that we can continue to complement each other? Because it's basically a value collaboration exchange and that's the way we see it since beginning, is the way it's been now, and that's how we want to drive this in the future. Okay, fantastic. I want to keep on the on the pilot uh, part. We've uh, we've been discussing internally and with a few uh, of our clients that uh, building an MVP as an independent startup is one thing, and then uh, building an MVP or a pilot um, with within a corporate context or with a corporate, um, there there are different factors to to consider. Maybe Carl, you can comment on how how that worked because uh, you obviously came came from like a startup mindset and this agile and lean. Um, and and often um, it may be perceived that uh, big companies may, may be a little bit slower in certain uh, cases. That's not always the case. <laughs> um, but 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 how how did that um, process work out for you? Mm -hmm. I think it generated incredibly well because the culture at Reckitt is one of entrepreneurs, where a lot of the team, if I'm honest with you, are kind of entrepreneurs working for a big corporation and that really helped us because we had regular calls with different stakeholders within the business from you know the team in Italy doing R&D to the data team looking at how to leverage insights of the kind of consumer behaviors that we can see um, and triage that and help us to understand them because obviously data for its own sake is one thing the expertise around how to triage that and understand 
um, cyclical behaviors was was brilliant and I think a lot of it came down to faith trust and buy-in from the senior leadership at Reckitt so Paula um, as well as others across the business really helped to unlock that for us and I think that that was critical if, if I'm honest you know if it's just one associate that's like you know I really want to make this happen but you don't get buy-in from the entire team across all different kind of specs and, and roles it's very difficult I think what we've really valued is that Reckitt really opened their doors and said look th these are the things we're good at these are the things we're not so good at take your pick and if you want to speak to anybody let us know and and we'll make that happen and, and they did you know I think we were unfortunate in that COVID obviously meant that a lot of our collaboration happened over the wire. So it took Paula and I, honestly, I think over a year and a half to actually meet face to face at COP26, but it kind of felt like we'd known each other for, for decades, which was lovely. So I do think that we're only really gonna start seeing the collaboration kick off big time in the years ahead where we can start bringing secondes and transfers between um, wreck and ourselves and vice versa to really, bring a lot of that culture into the workplace because of course the world post covid is distributed but we have an operational business that has chemistry has washing has operations and people and i think wreck it understand that you know they are a manufacturing supply chain business and we can learn a lot from that i i'm just incredibly grateful for the opportunity to work you know with wreck it and their experience and I, I have to say I'm I'm more excited for the future than I am reflecting on the past. Oh, that's so great to hear. Um, I want to um, touch on something that you said, and maybe this is for for you, Paula. Um, the the getting buy-in from from various stakeholders within uh, Records. Uh, how did you go about that? Because I feel that that's a challenge um, that that we found with within many corporates is is getting uh, the the board or or uh, exec leadership to yeah to to buy into the idea and to almost like let things slide through um to like maintain speed uh, how did you manage to do that so, so there's two things there the number one is as a company we are guided by this purpose which is to protect heal and nurture in the relentless pursuit of a healthier and cleaner world so guided by the purpose of the company i guess what we're trying to also as i mentioned before do is how we can use our brands to do more than just sell, but you serve and have greater purpose in terms of how we drive positive societal impact. And we have a firm belief that this is the way we need to go in the future because we, we yes, we can offer amazing products that deliver exactly what consumers are looking for, but we also need to ensure that in this disruptive world, we are driving connections and emotions and engagement from a broader um, a space of consumers. And, and I guess this is as a starting point is helping us to be in and having this can-do culture. This is how what we call this being entrepreneurs in Reckitt, help us to then get buying from from let's say from the board and from and from the hygiene exec, which is the business unit where, where I belong. Uh, so then when we actually started discussing um, the, the value collaboration exchange, I guess one of the things we also understand as a brand is that in the journey to really drive behavior consumer change, one of the things we need to do is we need to ensure consumers understand that it's not about having more sustainable laundry practices. It's about driving a circular fashion ecosystem because I don't know if you realize that people don't really know how much they wear their clothes. And I don't know if you knew that in an average, a consumer in the UK wears a garment only 10 times before this garment is being disposed. And um, this has a life value, a lifetime for a consumer of around like four years before the garment is discarded and then goes into landfill. So if we really, really want consumers to understand that they play a key role in help to stay the life of garments so they can rewear them more and make them last, then it's all about how we can influence to drive a circular fashion ecosystem. And because this is our vision, uh, it's and it's something what that is really guiding the way we are thinking forward on how we bring innovations, how we bring services, how we bring a combined solutions so our consumers can get there. Just understanding that Oxwatch could be one of these platforms where we can deliver this ambition 
uh, seemed like the, the way to start really understanding much more. And this is what, where the beauty about the partnership is, because we are really have a higher ambition on how we avoid clothes going into landfill. And with this, how we're going to drive a circular fashion ecosystem. And Kyle and I have made a commitment that we want to become the de facto solution of circular fashion services like rentals, like platforms. Because also when you understand barriers for consumers entering into these, let's call it new business models, there's a lot about why consumers think of mm, it's secondhand, there's a hygiene element there. You know, bringing Vanish in to deliver that it is better clean and more hygienically and it's, it looks perfect because it has no stains, the colors are bright, make help to break some of these barriers that consumers have into coming into this circular fashion world, which is what we want to create. And, and that's what the, the way we have selling this and pitch to the business to get the buy-in. Okay, fantastic. So Records obviously has the purpose around sustainability and you have your objectives, but uh, knowing if you're meeting your objectives is obviously down to a reporting uh, thing. Um, maybe Kyle, uh, we'll start off with, with you. Um, what metrics are you tracking beyond financials, um, like uh, beyond the financials from a sustainability point of view? Like how, how do you know that you are keeping with your sustainability goals? Mm, two levels for this. One is very internal. So we track things like carbon intensity, water intensity, microfiber capture, and kind of chemistry toxicity. And these are benchmarked as a unit per kilogram of washing that we perform and contrasted against the industry average. And that's both washing at home. So like the typical user practices that consumers exhibit, which we know because we've done a lot of um, consumer surveys alongside Reckitt um, across Europe um, with obviously a focus on the UK, but also at scale too, you know, for the other operators that, that do kind of cleaning for um, hotels, hospital chains, things like that. So we've got a lot of data around how does our carbon you know, release per kilogram compare against the industry, the liters of water used per kilogram of washing, things like that. We track that absolutely doggedly with all sorts of data capture all the way from the machine level. So all our machines we've IoT connected so that we can also demonstrate to the individual customer their water, energy, all those kind of impact savings by using us as opposed to washing at home, which is a really big uh, transition from the opacity of the industry in the past. The second, which is slightly harder to analyze, but I think broadly speaking, more impactful is when you take into account the life cycle analysis of manufacturing clothes new and our collaboration with Vanish, keeping existing clothing alive and in circulation for longer, the offset of doing that against fast fashion and the manufacture of clothes new at such a ridiculous scale, it's quite scary, is massive because the energy, water, cotton, fertilizer, all of those raw ingredients that go into making a new T-shirt is dramatically higher than it is to keep it alive for another 20, 30, 40 uses. So when you take into account the industry as a whole and the lifetime journey of a kind of cradle to grave item, then our work is incredibly impactful. We, we need to do more to understand that because it is complex and there's so many different parts of that supply chain. But even just on the back of the envelope, it makes sense, right? Like keeping an asset alive for longer is more sustainable than throwing it away and buying a new one, throwing it away, buying a new one. That's, that's crazy. So we're hoping our collaboration will really dive into that in the months and years ahead. Okay, great. Um, and then Paolo, let me throw that to you. Um, what, what metrics um, do you require from uh, Oxwash beyond the financials? Because that's like a, normally like the obvious thing um, that we report on. Yeah, um, you know, to be honest, I, I don't think there's any financial commitment at this stage that we have with Oxwatch because as, as I mentioned before, this is part of one of Reckitt, um, you know, access venture capital arms. And, and we believe that we, we have a responsibility to help, um, you know, founders and startups to get there. Uh, so be, by part of the responsibility, what, one of the things, as I mentioned before, is, you know, how we support Kyle with the expertise, the knowledge, all of that. But for us, in terms of, of metrics, it's, it's, it's just, you know, having an amazing opportunity to partner with an, that, with an a startup that has a broader mission and vision. And just getting 
insights and foresights on how consumers think about sustainability, how consumers think about laundry. That helps to inform us in terms of, you know, how we, we have that like foresight ahead of time to be able to be ready for what consumers are going to demand in the future. So this is one of the key metrics, insights and foresight and access in a real time data um, about this because it's they have they have the consumer there. We are we are not a B two B company. We are not a B two C company, uh, so we do not have access to so much like rich data. And it can be a small data right now, but it's big data for us. So this is one of the key metrics that um, I'm bringing into the business on how we are learning from these eco conscious millennial consumers, and how we can drive our sustainability credentials and strengthen them. The second element it's audiences. Um, th there is a rich element behind how we can use this first party data to map new consumer groups and, and talk to them and, 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 and understand, you know, what, what are their journey, what are they doing? So there's a lot of like different ways for us to do research on consumers and not a typical market research, but like really access to, to consumers in a way that we can really talk to them in, in a much rich or personalized way. And, and, and I would say that the last thing, it's, it's how then somehow in the journey, we unlock um, and fertilize our sustainability credentials. Just and, and pairing with a laundry sustainable um, service uh, can also help us to somehow be seen as we are really taking the right steps into really transforming our brand and making sure that we are listening from these consumers in a way that we can continuously improve. Uh, so it's not a one leap improvement because it's, as I said before, we are not perfect. It's going to take us a while to get there, but we are really being informed by these insights and really taking the respect actions to really transform as a brand and just become a better product that has a much lesser impact on the planet, but in the process also understanding the role we play in the whole life cycle of a garment, which is something that, as Kyle mentioned before, we are really to track how combining the right products and the right services can help to then also decrease the carbon, the carbon footprint of, of the whole laundry space. Okay, so uh, this is for both of you. Maybe, Carl, you can go first. Um, what's next for Oxwash? Uh, what can we expect uh, in the upcoming years? Of course. So we've been doing a lot of work, you know, since the pandemic, intro of the pandemic and out the back end around our biggest growth potentials and also marrying that with where can we have the biggest impact? You know, our mission is to change the industry as a whole globally. And we've come to the realisation, as Paolo's mentioned already, that that concentration on circular fashion is something that we really, really want to lean into. And to that end, we need to make more of an impact, serve more customers and do so in a way that's more sustainable. So later this year, we'll be breaking ground on our next lagoon. Um, so our lagoons are our facilities. They're called lagoons because the floor is blue more than anything else. Uh, it'll be 10 times the size of our existing largest facility and it'll really start to power some massive um, kind of exchange, rental, resale platforms and many, many brands doing buyback or returns, um, kind of restoration. And of course, our collaboration with wreck with Banish specifically is absolutely critical to making that work. Um, we've not really gone into the tech behind Oxwash, but there's a lot that we've done around the kind of inputs and outputs of the system, but stain removal um, and kind of vibrancy of the garment, as Paula's mentioned, is critical to getting secondhand clothes, sales swaps and rentals adopted en masse. So we're really excited to double down there and start seeing some unique collaborations with the two of us and other brand partners and, and maybe changing some brand bases from fast fashion to circular for good. So it's going to be a big year ahead. Okay, exciting. And Paula, where do you see this going? So I would say that it is about building an ecosystem of partners where we complement capabilities. Uh, and, and I think Kyle said it beautiful. Um, because it, we can have the products and the services, but we also need the garment um, partners. We also need consumers buying in in this whole new circular fashion space. Uh, so that's our aim goal, how, how we are part of this broader ecosystem of partners, all fighting towards the need to make clothes live longer lives and in the process avoid them to, to go into landfill. Because it's all about driving societal impact. Uh, that's what we're aiming to do. 
And, and we, will, we will only do this and be successful if we think of how we want to reinvent the future of the fashion industry. And this is why we're also collaborating uh, with partners like BFC, for example. We, we are the BFC uh, partner, uh, official partner in the process of driving circularity of fashion. And then Kyle is coming along in this journey. And we have some of the other partners that are interested in, in seeing and how they tap into this because it's, a, it's all about ensuring that consumers understand that they have also a broader responsibility in terms of how they wash, they care, and they wear their clothes. And we are only going to do this by really joining forces as an industry and working together to reinvent the future of fashion. Okay, fantastic. Guys, thank you so much for uh, taking the time today. Um, I'm sure our community of corporate, corporate entrepreneurs is going to learn a lot. I've definitely learned uh, qu quite some. Um, yeah, so thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Amen. Cool. Thanks. Good to see you.